Okay. I'm recording. You're recording. We're all recording. Now, where's the ice cream? Wait a minute. That has nothing to do with recording. Also, it's in the freezer. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 5, Episode 21. Scare Master. Okay, um, the episode felt a little slow to me at the start, but picked up pretty nicely. Kind of saw where they were going with it, trying to conquer Fluttershy's next fear, which is good because her actually growing as a character would be nice because, yeah. <laughs> because character development is good, um, but for starters, another example of Angel being a jerk. <laughs> Well, his jerkiness came in handy later. <laughs> that evil smile of his sends shivers down my spine. And then I remember, I have a net to catch bunnies. I actually don't, but I thought it would be funny there. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the overall lesson of you don't have to like the same holidays as your friends. Well, I think the lesson was more than just that. It's okay to try something and decide you don't like it. Oh. Do lessons again. Didn't you doing that a lot this season? <laughs> because the whole thing with her singing in Big Mac's place was that she learned that she actually liked performing. Not just singing, but performing. So she tried something new and liked it. So now she tries something new, faces a fear, and determines, yeah, I still don't like this. <laughs> and that's all right. You tried. So apparently she's really good at scaring people. <laughs> Though with a whole bunch of animals helping you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, all of that was Angel's idea. Fluttershy just acted it out. <laughs> and I liked all the references to Flutterbat, though apparently you were slightly disappointed. <laughs> yeah, teas. Like, okay, we have the apples, and she gets apprehensive about the apples. I'm like, oh, is somebody having trouble keeping their fangs in? You're worried about not being able to hear a monster. Oh, vampire fruit bat costume. Yeah, she should definitely wear that. And then later, wow, she looks like Flutterbat. Ah, oh, dang it, it's just the costume. <laughs> Wait a minute, how could she manage to hang upside down like that when she's not Flutterbat? <laughs> uh, speaking of costumes, AJ apparently is going through everyone from The Wizard of Oz because last time we had a Halloween episode, she was a scarecrow. This time, she's the Cowardly Lion. If we have another Halloween episode, People's thinking she's going to be the Tin Man. <laughs> Quite likely, if that is actually what the theme is. And Rainbow Dash was an astronaut, I believe? Yes, which begs the question, does the MLP universe have a space program? <laughs> I don't know. They seem to have other bits of technology here and there. Arcade cabinets, anyone? Well, yeah, but that's a little different from building a machine to launch a pony into space. So the question is, do they really have a space program, or is this just, you know, fantasy? I was going to say, like, Daring Do, but Daring Do's real, so bad example. <laughs> uh, but there are still works of fiction there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure who Pinkie Pie's costume was either referencing or what she was really dressing up as. All I kept thinking is Jim in the holograms, but she didn't really fit anyone, I don't think. She didn't, and also roller skates so i was just kind of thinking 80s cosplay basically and i don't know maybe xanadu because i never watched xanadu but i know they're skating hmm i still can't remember what rarity was a mermaid oh yeah or should i say sea pony except they they actually said mermaid hmm i suddenly remembered it because every time she would turn in that one scene she would hit fluttershy in the face more fluttershy abuse really <laughs> I'm sorry, we, we did get flushed going, um, um, Rarity, would you mind smack? Stop, stop turning, would you? <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, please. And then we have Twilight in some sort of guard outfit, and we have Spike actually doing a costume instead of going, I'm a dragon, and being in a dragon costume, <laughs> he made himself a two-headed dragon. Mm-hmm. Which Flutterbat promptly rips the head off of later. <laughs> Which was really very mean because it takes a lot of work to put a costume together. Oh, but everyone seemed to enjoy it. Once they realized they weren't in danger. Because the problem was they didn't know Fluttershy was pranking them. 
and AJ knew this wasn't part of the maze, so everyone was legitimately freaked out because there is scary, creepy stuff in the MLP universe. <laughs> ah, so then the stuff you've just pointed out, any other nitpicks with episode overall? You just like to open the floodgates, don't you? <laughs> Content is king, and when I ask you to do that, there is a lot of content. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. The Cutie Mark Crusaders TPing a house? Highly inappropriate. I didn't catch that. How did you not catch that? I don't even remember what their costumes are now, but I caught that. <laughs> I didn't see them throwing anything like that. Though that reminds me of another costume I caught. Derpy as Twilight Sparkle. Yes, I saw that. I'm like, wow, princess cosplay. Kind of interesting that, you know, last Nightmare Night we didn't see anyone cosplaying as Celestia. <laughs> and there were some repeat costumes. Um, the brown stallion in the ninja outfit, and the yellow pony in the mouse outfit. Mm -hmm. So back to your uh, list of nitpicks. <laughs> Uh, Fluttershy had some very va valid points about Rarity's costumes. A mask restricts visions, layers make it difficult to move, but she forgot to pick out the nitpick that was a problem with the black dress. Dark colors make you more difficult to see at night. Hmm, kind of like I recently saw a picture of kids who dressed as shadows for Halloween. That would be really fun, except for the part where your parents stick glow-in-the-dark tape all over you to make sure you don't get hit by a car. <laughs> ah, I just thought of a nice uh, dual costume. One person dresses as Peter Pan, the other dresses as a shadow. That would be fun. The person being the shadow costume could be taller because shadows stretch. So, what did you like about the episode? Because the costumes were nice. I like the idea of the maze that, you know, farmers do mazes like this in the real world. Yeah, except it's usually a corn maze, not stacks of hay bales. And considering the number of pegasi, shouldn't you, like, put some netting over the top of the hay bales to keep them from cheating and threading their way out of the maze if they get lost? Or maybe a tarp over the top of it so you, your pegasus friend can't scat it out first and then tell you, well, when you go in, you need to make a right, a left, a left, a right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's why I say netting, because you do still want to be able to um, see the sky. That's not fair to ha not be able to have any navigation. Also, a tarp would make it even darker than it already is. I liked how everyone was just having fun. Like, oh, it's scary. <laughs> oh, and that reminds me. Okay, where is Discord? Probably causing trouble in Canterlot because, you know, he's really truly only friends with Fluttershy and Fluttershy locks herself up. So I'm thinking Discord and Luna went out together. <laughs> you know, because the first Nightmare Night lesson was that scary can be fun. Mm -hmm. And now that that was established, this episode just went with, yeah, scary is fun. Until it's not. Yeah. Also lesson, don't over prank people. <laughs> There is such a thing as going too far. Oh, I was going on about some of the things I liked to get you started on things you liked, but we never got to the things you liked, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, because mainly like the costume and the overall lesson of both of facing your fears with the support of your friends and trying new things. And just because you try something new doesn't mean you have to like it. Oh, I gotta say, both me and you really like Nightmare Night slash Halloween. Yeah, but I'm more on the little kid side of it. I like the fun scares, <laughs> not all of the gore and exorcist walking dead type stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not one to watch um, scary movies on Halloween, though I did watch Markiplier play through part of the Halloween update for Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, I just limited myself to the one, two, three Key of Awesome Halloween songs. <laughs> Trick or Treat or Die, the sexy one, and the update to the Monster Mash. Ah. Which is basically how I feel. It's like, okay, yes, it's scary, but still fun. And you guys just go for the gross out factor. And poor Fluttershy with the tea party. I mean, I understand that she was trying to be scary, and the things represented were, you know, scary slash disheartening, but not in a Nightmare Night way. And my problem with that is, 
Fluttershy knows exactly what scares her about Nightmare Night, so she should have very easily been able to tap into those without Angel's suggestions that gave us the big scare at the end. Also, Fluttershy is a closet otoku? Otoku? Wow, I can't <laughs> speak Japanese today. <laughs> Oh yeah, we forgot about those, even though we went over that a little bit before the start of this recording. <laughs> yeah, so I was able to name three of them off the bat, and one looked familiar. One of the ones I couldn't name looked familiar, but I couldn't quite place her, and then the other one I couldn't do it all, and Lux had to tell me. Yeah, I was able to name all of them but the center one, because i seen the character before but didn't know the name. So the names are Ranma, Bulma, Utenya, Ray and Usagi. Uh, from Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, Evangelion, Ranma one half, and Revolutionary Girl Utenya. I had trouble with Bulma mainly because that's her Dragon Ball look, and I didn't really see much of Dragon Ball. I mainly saw DBZ. Well, they didn't release the original Dragon Ball over here, I don't think, for a while until most of the way through Dragon Ball Z, and then they released the original Dragon Ball over here, which I watched. Yeah, but I had trouble with the broadcast time, and at that time I was also having issues with the VCR stopping in the middle of recording something. Oof. VCRs. Yeah. Those old things. Yeah, I know. I just severely dated myself. <laughs> at least you didn't say 8-tracks or laser discs. <laughs> I may still technically own an 8-track. It's probably at my mom's. <laughs> uh. So, uh, more nitpicks? Fluttershy's spooky voice was actually kind of spooky. Yes, it was. It was the content that was kind of lacking. <laughs> and the whole, aren't you scared of this? Uh, no. <laughs> yes. Because the spooky tea party is a good idea. It's just the stuff she came up with during the tea party didn't really work. <laughs> yeah, and I wonder if they were inspired by, to for the idea of the spooky tea party, um, the Gothic Tea Party webcomics, where a bunch of ladies uh, get together in costume and have a tea party and tell scary stories. Hmm, don't know. They seem to be heavily referencing anime in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but this is specifically a webcomic. Also, last nitpick, she went out into Nightmare Night, knows what she doesn't like about it, has faced her fears, yet at the end of the episode we are still hiding under the bed. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was like, wait a minute, couldn't she just at least now answer the door to trick-or-treaters? Well, even if she doesn't answer the door, she can still keep the door locked and, I don't know, actually sleep in the bed? <laughs> instead of under it? Hmm. Maybe it's how she celebrates Nightmare Night now, going from cowering underneath there to actually having like her animal friends underneath there just celebrating with her. Yeah, I think the intent was for it to have more of a sleepover atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But for me, I was just like, really? Fluttershy, you were out there. You were causing some of the Nightmare Night scares, and you're still down under the bed. Okay, I know I said last nitpick, but Fluttershy has been established that she is not a particularly good flyer. So how did she do all of that Flutterbat stuff while wearing the Flutterbat costume? I was thinking that a little bit myself. <laughs> okay, I'm done nitpicking, I promise. <laughs> I'm not gonna pinky promise though. I have seen how that can go wrong. <laughs> Uh, but I love your nitpicking. Well, overall, I like the episode. It was a good Halloween episode. Good lessons. Try something new. You can Even if you try something new, you don't have to like it. You can like different holidays than your friends. You can like different things than your friends. It doesn't just have to be holidays. And uh, don't prank too far. <laughs> Costumes were nice. References were nice. I liked it. Yes, for me this was a much better second Nightmare Night episode than the second Hearthwarming Eve episode. So despite all my nitpicks, it was a decent Nightmare Night and it had good lessons. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 21, Scare Master. Because, of course, we have to make a play on words for the last time that Fluttershy went out at night and dealt with something scary with that cockatrice. You know, back when she was the Stairmaster. <laughs> Thanks for listening. 
If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really enjoy listening to us blather on? Try subscribing. Also, comment sections there. Please be nice. Really, really like Lux's art? He does take commissions and also has a Patreon. All links in the description.